Okay students, welcome back to another video of Mathify. In today's video, we'll do paper 6. It's practical paper, February, March 2025, 0625, variant 2. So, question number 1 is saying, a student investigates the behavior of spring and then uses the spring to determine the mass of an object. And the apparatus is shown over here over in the clamp. We have attached a spring and a mass to it. And this L is the stretched length of the spring. The student suspends a mass of 100 gram from the spring. She measures and records in table 1.1 the stretched length of the spring as indicated in figure 1.1. Describe two techniques from measuring the length of spring to ensure an accurate reading you may draw a diagram. So this can be the diagram because if you want the accurate reading you should attach a pointer at the end of the spring and while taking the reading your eye should be perpendicular to the meter ruler and your eye should be at eye level to avoid errors. So attach a pointer at the bottom of the spring and take reading from the eye level to avoid errors. B part says she repeats step A for values 200 gram, 300 gram, 400 gram and 500 gram. Her readings are shown in table. Here are the results. And this L is the stretched length of the spring. Now plot a graph of stretched length at y axis against m over g at x axis. Start the axis from the origin. Draw the best fit line. I have choose the best possible scale for x and y axis. On y axis we have stretched length of the spring and one box is representing 0.4 cm and on x axis we have mass and one small box is representing 10 grams. Now I have plotted the values that were provided in the table and now I will draw a line which will best fit these values. So this is the line which is the best fit of the plotted values and now we will go to the next part of the question. Here we have a spring on which we have attached an unknown mass x and it is the stretched length of the spring. The question is saying an object of x mass is suspended, measure the stretched length lx of the spring. So I took a ruler and I measured the stretched length which is exactly equal to 10 cm. After it, second part is saying use the graph and your reading from D part 1 to determine the mass x of the object. Show clearly on graph how you obtained your answer. So for 10 cm of stretch length, you can see the mass is 210 grams. So I've just put the answer in the provided space. E part says two students measure the mass of an other object using same method and apparatus. One student records the mass 13.2 gram and the other student record the mass 130 gram. State and explain which answer has more suitable number of significant figures for this experiment. You know this experiment is measuring the extension or the stretch length of the spring when you attach some mass to your spring. The number 132.6 has 4 significant figures and 130 has 2 significant figures. And uh, to us, the number with less significant figures is more suitable because of the fact precision of our measuring instrument is not that much good. Question number 2. A student investigates the effect of insulation on cooling of water. He uses the apparatus shown in figure 2.1. Beaker A is covered with material that is a thermal insulator. And beaker B is identical to beaker A but has no insulation. So beaker A has insulation and we pour some hot water into it and let it cool. And beaker B has no insulation and we do the same for this. And here is the thermometer which will measure the rate of cooling. Record the room temperature shown in thermometer. So if we see this thermometer, the temperature is 1 degree above 20. So it would be 21 degrees Celsius. Second question says describe one technique used to ensure that the room temperature reading is an accurate value. So the same thing while taking the reading, you should make sure that your eye is at the level of the reading to avoid any parallax error. So taking reading perpendicular to avoid parallax error. 
Bpath says the student pour 200 cm cube of hot water into the beaker A and record the temperature at time t equals to 0. He records in table 2.1 the temperature of water in the beaker after every 30 seconds. The student repeats the procedure for beaker B as well. It is important that the temperature are recorded at exactly 30 seconds. So he took the uh, beakers, he poured 200 centimeter cube of water, hot water into both of them and he put the thermometer and after every 30, second, 30 seconds gap, he is going to measure and record the temperature from the thermometer and he will do the same thing for beaker B as well. So question says describe a technique which will make it easier for the student to do that. He can use stopwatch to measure 30 second interval accurately and keep the thermometer into the liquid and record after every 30 seconds. So here we have table 2.1 in which we have readings at 0 uh, seconds. The temperature of beaker A is 92.5 and beaker B is 93. Then it start cooling down and after every 30 seconds we measure the temperature. CPAT says write a conclusion starting whether the insulation affect the rate of cooling of water justify your answer by referring to values from the result. So if we see from the table beaker A is initially at 92.5 and then after 180 second it is at 85.5 that means the change in temperature is only 7 degrees centigrade and for beaker B the initial temperature is 93 and then it is 83 that means the total change in temperature or cooling is 10 degrees celsius. So the beaker A has 7 degree of cooling and beaker B has 10 degree of cooling that means the values are almost same or close to each other and that means the insulation has negligible effect on the cooling. Dpath says calculate the average cooling rate x1 during the first half of experiment for the water in the beaker B. Use the reading for the beaker B from table 2.1 and the equation that is provided. And in this equation T is 90 seconds, theta 0 and theta 90 are the temperatures of water in the beaker at time T equals to 0 and T equals to 90 seconds. Include the units as well. So at 0 seconds the temperature of beaker B is 93 degrees and at 90 seconds the temperature is 87 degrees. Putting the values in the equation it would be 93 minus 87 over 90 which is the time interval. So the final answer or the cooling rate is 0 0.067. Second question says calculate the average cooling rate x2 during the second half of the experiment for the water in the beaker B. Use the reading for the beaker B from table 2.1 and the equation where t is 90 seconds and theta 90 and theta 180 are the temperatures of water in the beaker at 90 seconds and 180 seconds include the units. So at 90 seconds the temperature of beaker B was 87 degrees Celsius and at 180 seconds the temperature of the beaker is 83 degrees Celsius. Putting the values it would be 87 minus 83 over 90. So the answer is 0 0.044 and the units would be degrees Celsius over seconds. Let me put the units in the first question as well. Now, E part says a student suggests that for this type of experiment, the temperature of water in each beaker at the time t equals to zero must be same for the comparison to be fair. Use the, your answer for D part one and D part two to explain whether this is necessary or not. So yes, initially the beaker A was at 92.5 degree Celsius, but the beaker B was at 93 degree Celsius and this is unfair. So yes, for fair comparison, it is necessary if the temperatures are different, initially cooling rates will be affected. If the initial temperature is high, then the cooling rate would be greater. F path says a student want to eliminate from comparison any thermal energy lost from the surface of the water. Suggest a change to the equipment which will do that. So if energy is lost from the surface, you can use a lid to cover the surface to avoid the energy loss. 
suggest what effect this change will have on cooling rate of water in beaker A and beaker B. So if you're using a lid, the rate of cooling will decrease because evaporation would be controlled. A student investigate the refraction of a light by a transparent log. The student's ray trace sheet is shown full size in figure 3.1. So here is a ray sheet and this is block A, B, C, D. The student places a transparent block A, B, C, D near the center of ray trace sheet as indicated. Draw a normal at point N extending above A, B and label the upper end of normal with letter L. So we are supposed to draw the normal at point N. Make sure the line of your protector is aligned with line AB and then you draw a normal that should be above the line AB and label it L. So here we have a normal above AB. Second part says the student draw the line E and as shown in figure 3.1. On figure 3.1, measure the acute angle theta between the line LN and EN. An acute angle is an angle less than 90. We are supposed to measure this angle which is between L and N E N. I'll place the protector again over there and I will align my protector with the line A B and I will measure this angle from the point A. This lower angle is 50 so I'll subtract 50 from 90 and I'll get this upper angle which is 40 degree and we can use the alternate method that if we place our protector like this so L would be our base and from L to E the angle is 40 so we can measure it like this as well. So the angle is 40 degree and I am writing it over here. B part says the student places two pins P1 and P2 on line EN as shown. Measure the distance between P1 and P2. So the distance between P1 and P2 can be measured by using a ruler and it is 4 cm. So I'll write in the area provided 4 cm is the distance. Second part says state whether the two pins are suitable distance apart for the accuracy of the tracing and explain your answer. So no, they are not at a suitable distance because pin should be at least 5 cm away from each other. C part says the student view the image P1 and P2 through the block. He places two pins P3 and P4 so that P3 and P4 and the image of P1 and P2 all appear exactly behind each other. Draw a line through P3 and P4 and extend this line to meet CD. Label the point at which the line meets CD with letter F and label the lower end of the line with letter G. So I am going to match P4 and P3 and I am naming this point F and the lower point as G. Extend the line EN to approximately 5 cm below the line CD. Label the point at which the line crosses CD with letter H and label the lower end of the line as letter J. So now we are going to measure the angle alpha between line CD and GF and the angle beta between the line CD and JH. So firstly, I'm going to extend the line P1, P2, 5 cm below the line DC and I will name this point H and this point as J. After it, I will measure both the angles. Make sure to align your protector with the line DC. For this F point, the angle is nearly 53.3. So I'm writing it over here. For this H point, I'll put the protector again and align it with the line DC. And I will measure the angle precisely. And this is nearly equals to 50.3. So I will write 50.3 over here. So angle alpha, is 53.3 and angle beta is 50.3. Second part says a student suggests that angle alpha and angle beta should be equal. State whether your results support the suggestion. Justify your answer by reference to the values from your results. So um, the first angle is 53.3 and the next angle is 50.3 and there is 3 degree of difference which is very minor. So values are close and within the experimental accuracy. 
EPATH says describe two techniques to use in this experiment to ensure the results are accurate. To get accurate results, draw thin and precise lines, use a clean block, insert pin vertically and take reading from the base of the pin, use smooth surface beneath the paper, you can write any two of them. FPATH says suggest one reason why different students all doing this experiment carefully may not obtain identical results because they might be drawing thick lines and they can be a parallax error. Question number four says a student investigate the resistance of a wire, plan an experiment which enable him to investigate how length of wire affects the resistance of wire. The resistance R is calculated from the equation R equals to voltage over current where V is the potential difference across the wire and I is the current in the wire. And the apparatus includes a selection of a wire, a variable power supply, an emitter and a voltmeter. So uh, in this experiment we have a variable voltage supply and the uh, emitter is used to measure the current and there is a wire with multiple lengths that we are going to attach and measure the resistance. List any additional apparatus needed. So we might need a meter ruler to measure the length of the wire. Compare figure 4.1 to show voltmeter connected to measure the potential difference across the wire. Voltmeter is connected parallel to measure the potential difference across wire. Explain briefly how to do the experiment including the measurements to take so that the resistance can be determined. State the key variables to kept constant. Draw a table or the tables with column headings to show how to display the readings. You are not required to enter any reading and explain how to use the reading to reach conclusion. So firstly the apparatus that we need is a meter ruler and a voltmeter. Now what are the constant variables? The cross-sectional area of the wire that means thickness of the wire should be kept constant. The supply voltage and the material of the wire are going to be constant. What are the changing variables in this experiment? The length of the wire is going to be changed in, in intervals 25, 50, 75 and 100. The experimental strategy is that uh, take for 25 centimeter wire attach it to complete the circuit note the current in the emitter the voltage in the voltmeter and measure the resistance by the equation r is equals to v divided by i repeat the reading for all the different length of the wires and you can draw a table like this first the length of the wire is mentioned then the current and the voltage and then the resistance calculated by the equation v over i is mentioned in the table to draw the conclusion take the reading of r using different lengths and then compare by plotting a graph so here we have the complete experiment thanks for watching the video if it was helpful please hit the like button and subscribe my channel